to Team Keep It Clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You want to join the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can just go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if for some reason you don't want to, that's fine as well. I still love you. Always love your questions. And let, let's just get into these questions because y'all, as always, bring that fire. Wide receiver in the draft? First question came from my guy Brian. He said, who do you think we should draft as wide receiver? When and who? Uh, thank you. I appreciate your show and love your insight. It keeps me going in the offseason. Oh, where did you get that charcoal hoodie with the high neck? Love it. I want one. Charcoal with the high neck. I don't know which one you're even talking about. Um, but he said, uh, as far as wide receiver, man, um, this, is, uh, this is a tricky one. Because we got Bateman so We know Sammy Watkins, he's gone He ain't coming back We got Bateman We got Hollywood We got Duvernay and Prochet um, Tylen Wallace as well Still got Boykin But as I've expressed before I, I do believe that Boykin I don't think he's going to be with the Ravens next season I, I think they're going to end up trading him But as far as wide receiver I feel like you, you got some guys that can do it um, But I feel like... Uh, you could get a just a big, an aggressive, big body wide receiver that's going to go get it, um, and and that would be a nice compliment to everybody else. Um, so who that is, where they get him, if it's free agency, okay, cool. Uh, if it's the draft, okay, cool. I haven't looked at anybody. I have not looked at one draft prospect yet at all. We'll get there soon, I promise you. Um, but. Yeah, I will say whether it's free agency or the draft. Um, but as, if it's free agency, then it would not be anybody. It, it'd be like a little one-year, two-year deal. Um, but you got some guys on your squad already. You really do. It's just really a matter of using them to their <laughs> strengths. Next question came from my guy Matthew from Kansas. Oh, man. So you out there. He said, I first wanted to start off by saying I hope you as well as everyone watching is having a wonderful day. Uh, you put out such great content, and I'm sure, like me, people don't have to be a fan or just the Ravens fan to enjoy the channel. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I definitely wouldn't say it's great content, though. It's all right, but we got a lot of work to do and a lot of stuff to work on, but I appreciate that, man. He said, I'm a lifelong Chiefs fan. Oh, okay, so never mind. So, he, oh, he, fl he flipped it up on us. I thought this was a Ravens fan and living out there in Kansas. Okay, all right, so I'm a lifelong Chiefs fan. Oh, so he been... He just been loving football for these past couple years. Oh, man, he been on top of the world, man. Like, Super Bowl a couple years ago. Should have been Super Bowl uh, three years ago. Um, and then make it to the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, they lost, but still, like, y'all made it to the Super Bowl. Like, and I know it, it can only be one winner, but y'all were the only other team that could have won the Super Bowl because y'all were the only other team that played in the Super Bowl. So he just living life right now. Anyway, all right, he said I'm a lifelong Chiefs fan and been watching for the past two years. Oh, man. I Okay, cool. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, that's cool, man. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what brought me to your channel, but anytime I'm driving in my work van or driving to the grocery store, I put on your videos and escape reality for a bit. I even watch the Ravens specific videos to keep up to date about the team. Maybe it's just checking up subconsciously to see what your team is doing in comparison, but I sure enjoy your insight and opinions on subjects in the NFL. Just want to say thanks for the content and can't wait for your offseason draft slash free agency content. Oh, man. I appreciate that, man. So he didn't even have a question or nothing. He was just uh, checking in. I, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you, man. Man, I had to get myself back together. All right, next question came from my guy, Sean. Shout out to my guy, Sean, man, because he, he don't come through too often, but when he does, oh, boy, he be dropping that Thor hammer. All right, let's see, though. He said, what's up, Engraving? I hope all is well with you and the fam. Chiming in and say the Ravens need to take it back to September 1st, 1996. Uh, Ted Marchibolda, the coach, and number 12, Vinny Testaverde was a quarterback. The Ravens had pride. They had nothing to lose, but they had everything to gain. Vinny added out to 2,000-yard receivers, Michael Jackson and Derek Alexandria. Michael Jackson had 14 touchdowns this season. And let's remember the first Ravens touchdown was a Vinny Testaverde quarterback run just like Lamar. It almost seems like nothing to say. Uh, J.K. could be Ernest Biner and Gus Edwards could be Bam Morris. The talent is equal, especially by the numbers. But at the end of the day, the heart is not there. The talent is there, 
but the heart is not. Yes, we all know Lamar Jackson is levels above Vinny Testaverde, but the play calling that Vinny Testaverde had back then is not here, and we all want Greg Roman gone. Uh, but then you have to ask yourself, is it really Greg Roman? Because the favoritism amongst the trust in receivers is questionable. Bateman, Duvernay, and Prochet have shown you if you throw them in the bowl, they will catch it. But the play calling is so elementary. How do you throw it to them if they cannot get open due to the routes that they run? The point I'm trying to make is I have never seen the Baltimore Ravens with this much talent on the offensive side of the ball, but with this much lack of coaching to take advantage of getting this talent the ball. And I truly believe the changes we truly need, oh, that true changes truly need to be made. I believe that EDC will make this team better through the draft, especially since we did not make the playoffs. But if Roman changes or not, uh, made or, or oh, if Roman changes or not made, I believe we will have another season of the same thing. A lot of wins, they get absolutely nowhere, possibly to the second round of the playoffs, and the fire will burn out there. I'm all for Roman going, but I'm stuck as who will be a suitable replacement. Uh, what do you think in this situation? Keep up the stellar work. Can't wait to chop it up with you about the draft. You know, I'm great with predictions. <laughs> so, if Roman, then who? Um, the way that I think the Ravens would do it if Roman was to be gone, um, I think that they will go to James Urban since he's been in the building for a minute. Uh, they know him. He knows them. He knows Lamar. Lamar knows him. Um, I would like if T. Martin was given an opportunity um, to bring just some fresh concepts, some fresh life to the offense because he's only been around for a year. He's been around for a year, and he's had a chance to really get a feel for Greg Roman and how he runs things, and then he could take some things that Greg Roman is successful at, but also change some things that Greg Roman isn't successful at. And him having been, I think he was a quarterback before, I believe, um, but him having a quarterback heel, and he explained this too when he talked about coaching the wide receivers. He talked about his uh, experience as a quarterback and that he can help them understand what the quarterback's going through more. He can help them understand the quarterback's progression that much more. He can, under he can help them understand that, okay, the quarterback may not be looking my way at this point in my route that much, but he can just help them understand what the quarterback sees and if they can understand that much more of what the quarterback sees, then that can help them with what they see. That can help them running their routes. That can help them just build up that much better of a connection with one Lamar Jackson. Sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, a lot of times, it takes somebody that's been there and done that before to, in order to give you the best help. And he's obviously been there and done that before. And you just, you don't know. You don't, and I know some people, oh man, what did he do in, uh, what was it, USC or Tennessee? I think you, I forgot where. Was it, I think it was USC. What was USC? Was Sam Donald? I forgot. But anyway, oh man, there's, it's often struggled there sometimes, but and it's just like, man, like, it's just fresh, it's fresh, fresh life, man. And the offense just need, like, they need to get their swagger back, man, because they losing it, man. They, they ain't got that same swagger, man. And I know maybe because Lamar ain't been out there for a while, but that, they just ain't had that same swagger, man. It's just, it, it was different. Um, so, and then I feel like he could just relate to the, the players on a whole nother level, man. I feel like he could relate to the players on a whole nother level. And it's, and y'all remember, any or anybody who was around, like, uh, two years ago This is exactly what I was asking for Exactly And when the Ravens hired both T. Martin and Keith Williams I was like Whoa, Are y'all listening? Are y'all watching the videos? Because I, I, I asked for somebody Who wasn't a coach in the NFL And they, they could have been a college coach But didn't have any NFL coaching experience As far as like being a coordinator or whatever So they could come in And, and they, will, they will bring fresh so I said some young Fresh coaches, man, that could come in and, and that, again, don't have the NFL experience. So ain't nobody got tape on what they did in the NFL or whatever. But they could come in and just really be young, innovative, and being able to relate to the, relate to the players on a whole nother level. 
Because when you can relate to somebody on a whole nother level, that can make whatever y'all are doing that much stronger and that much better. So to answer your question, uh, long story long, because <laughs> it's hard for me to make a long story short. Y'all already know. Um, I would say T. Martin. I would say T. Martin. I don't think Keith Williams has been an offensive coordinator before. But that don't mean he can't do it. That don't mean he can't help. I mean, he's a, what the passing game coordinator. I think I forget what his position is, but I, I would say T. Martin. Um, my guy uh, S. G. Skeptical man, he made a um, a good suggestion and an interesting suggestion, and, and he talked about how the Ravens could actually attach um, T. Martin to Greg Roman as sort of a uh, a double offensive coordinator, co-offensive coordinator, and obviously this would sort of be a transition because ain't nobody trying to share no position, ain't nobody trying to share a coordinator role. But this would put heat on Greg Roman and, and ultimately be like sort of his his sort of push out. And I mean, the Ravens, they you, you, you brought in two coaches to help where Greg Roman is known to struggle at. So it, they already done started the process, really. They really did. Like if, if you if you're doing everything right at your job, your employer is not going to bring in somebody to, to, to do anything to help you because you got it all down pat. But the fact that the Ravens, they brought in those guys that to specialize in the passing game, to specialize with the wide receivers, they ain't bring them boys in for no reason. Like They ain't bring them in for no reason. And Greg Roman wasn't requesting that help. I don't even think uh, Harbaugh hired. I think that was uh, EDC in them. I got to double check, but I, I, I know Greg Roman didn't. I know he didn't. But I got to double check because I don't think Harbaugh did either. But regardless, if Harbaugh did or didn't, they brought them boys in to, to, to do the job that you have been struggling with for the longest. You're historically known to struggle when it comes to the passing game. So that, that says a lot about what the situation is. So, yeah, it could be the beginning of the end for g -Roll. Next question came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, happy postseason engraving. I would like to thank you for doing your part to make a somewhat disappointing season. <laughs> <laughs> more enjoyable with the Q&A sessions that you host on the daily. Uh, you're sort of like a therapist to Ravens fans everywhere. LOL. Uh, now, I don't know, man. I feel like if, if you came to me as a therapist, then you're going to really need therapy after that. Uh, but he said, now that we're officially into this offseason, um, we can start talking about this 14th pick now that we have learned more about our weaknesses. Everyone has started to call for EDC to draft offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, or DB with their first pick. But I declare to Engraven and Team Keep It Clean this day that the 14th pick must be dedicated to a can't-miss game-changing offensive stud, whether it be a running back, wide receiver, or tight end. The Ravens don't simply need the best player available, but the best playmaker available. Oof. If we ever intend to win the North again during Joe Burrow's career, the Ravens need their own version of what Jamar Chase or Derrick Henry bring to their respective teams. Oh, and those are can't miss players. We know, I mean, Ravens, Ravens fans know, Ravens know firsthand about Derrick Henry. Oh, yeah, we, we, we learned that um, quite a few times. Uh, of course, in a playoff game, and then uh, the next season in that game where it's like, oh, for three quarters, we were holding Derrick Henry down. He wasn't doing nothing. Then that fourth quarter hit, and then overtime, oh, and that was a wrap. But then the playoff game, Ravens were like, hey, we, we built this team to stop you. So then they finally end up stopping him and the Titans, and they got that playoff win. Then the next season, I mean, next week or the next season too. But anyway, um, and then Jamar Chase, like, yeah. Ra Ravens, uh, I mean, of course, he plays them twice a year, but still. Ra Ravens, they, they gave Jamar Chase a lot of stats. He got a lot of his numbers against those Ravens. And, of course, 500 Burrow. Anyway, um, allow me to pre pre preface my question with two quick points. Number one, with all the coming losses in player personnel, DeCosta will not be able to draft us back to defensive dominance in less than three years. Uh, number two, having too much faith in the full recovery and return of J.K. and Gus by the start of the 2022 season would prove to be unwise. Rushing them back will only increase the likelihood of re-injury. Don't rush. Don't rush. Do not rush. Um, just like Ronnie Stanley, Saquon Barkley, etc. 
That's true. So, mm, and now he said, uh, if you were plugged in, this is a multiple choice question, by the way. He said, if you were plugged in into the Matrix and, and assumed the role of Ravens GM and knew that the only way you'd be able to beat the newly crowned Bengals over the next three years would be to outscore them based on the QB's ability to pick your team's defense apart like chicken bones at a Fox's barbecue. Hmm, chicken wings sound good, but there's a shortage. Anyway, A, would you place more value in one of the nation's very top wide receivers who comes equipped with height, 4-3 speed, high jump ability, toe drag swag, lateral agility, and the extra strength to fight for yak? I feel like I'm already sold. I like. <laughs> I feel like I'm done. I feel like that's my, that's my answer right there, man. Because, like... Let me just read the other ones first, though, because y'all know me. I'm always I'm always with the sexy pick. That's me all day. Like the Bengals did with Jamal Chase instead of taking an offensive lineman. I would have done the same thing 50 more times, 50 times over. Had to do it all over again. I would have done the same thing every single time. Anyway, B, uh, a stout running back with crazy balance, breakaway speed and a nightmare to tackle a yak machine. Oh, yeah, I'm still sold on A right now, even after B. B sounds good, too, but I'm still sold on A. But let me let me get to another one. Uh, C, a tight end standing at 6'5", who can block better than Nick Boyle and has sticky hands like a gecko, a knack for always getting open, and a perfect book in the pair with, with Mandrews. Which would you choose? LOL. Oh, them, uh, them two, three tight end sets back in the building. So out of these three, I would go with A. C would be my next choice and then B would be my last choice, but I would go with A. Reason I would go with A is because... Um, I know we got Duvernay And Duvernay uh, It seems like he's Because he's not the best route runner He got hands though And, and he got that playmaking ability You, you just, just got to get him the ball uh, The right way You can get him the ball in a screen game But we don't really have a screen game um, uh, they, they got the jet sweeps and, But they, they are so predictable so many times But um, We got Proche Proche ain't a burner Proche would he's, a, he's a little too He's like 5'10 I think Something like that He got hands though He can catch That boy got He got hands and a lot of times it looks like he's going to drop the ball, he, but he be making it happen. That boy can catch everything. Um, we got Tylen Wallace, too. And Tylen Wallace, he ain't been able to – he ain't really had the opportunity to really show too much. Um, but Rashad Bateman, when he's been out there, he has looked good, and he's, he be getting open. Hollywood, got to work on his hands, but he be getting open, too. He be getting open. <laughs> um, but, yeah, got to work on the consistency of the catching. But to add A – would you place more value in, an, in one of the nation's very top wide receivers who comes equipped with height, 4-3 speed, he can jump, toe drag swag, lateral agility, and the extra strength to fight for Yak? Oh, yeah, to add that, for those to be your top three wide receivers, Bateman, Hollywood, and then this guy too? Yes, I, I would be for that all day, to have somebody that, that got some height. So with the height, is that... that allows that that's that, that gives them a bigger catch radius so that lets the quarterback if you throwing them the deep ball you really throwing them anything you ain't got to get it into this tight window or it don't got to be as tight but the fact that they they got this radius where they, they can go up and get it they can go up and grab it and and for them to fight for that yak for them to be that much more aggressive that it, the mindset would be everything too but if they have all of this then yeah i would i, I would be with that all day I, I i i love that question uh and he also said um now that the most recent video is the one i've been looking for uh, i'm with you all the way you're 100 right we don't know how our players will perform coming off these season ending injuries and surgeries i uh, love how you pointed out the fact that the acl surgeries to jk and gus are not routine surgeries that a player will simply return to being the same player he was pre-injury the very next season but that it actually takes uh, that second year to fully heal and regain the 100 percent strength of that that God blessed them with. Uh, you pointed out all the best examples with Nick Boyle, Patrick McCarry, Ronnie Stanley, Patrick Ricard, and how even even how Snoop wasn't even fully ready to return after his bout with the virus. Uh, you have my wheels turning and I'm now I'm feeling compelled to send a question for subscribers later today in reference to the offense. He says, sorry, you done got me started. Go Barano. And let's see what that question was. Five touchdowns per game. He said, uh, thanks for making the offseason fun. Team Keep It Clean is an exclusive club. I don't know about all that. But anyway, he said, here's what we know. Joe Burrow is an absolute beast who will be around for years to come and who's still improving and evolving. If the Ravens ever intend to beat Cincy again, 
uh, during the LJ8 era, EDC will need to assemble a group capable of putting up a minimum of five touchdowns per game versus those guys in orange and black. Yeah, because that's, that's just 35 points. And, yeah, you know Joe Burrow and them, like, they're going to get this. Like, you could have uh, this, and, and we want to see what this uh, healthy Ravens defense looks like against them, but still, they're going to get this. They're going to get this. So you got to get even more of yours when you're going against them. Uh, he said, even with a healthy Gus and J.K., we are not a five-touchdown type of team. Uh, if the goal is to win the North, beat KC in the AFC Championship in 2022, and go on to Super Bowl 23 uh, in 2023, uh, the Ravens will need to assemble an outstanding group to complement Manjus and Bateman, and it needs to happen quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, you old school. You, you said that saying? Oh, yeah. You old school with that one. Anyway, he said... Uh, Questions. With Lamar's contract still pending, how many ingenious transactions via trade, draft, and or free agency would it take for EDC to build an offensive group that, when assembled, would be capable of putting up five touchdowns per game? I promise uh, that four touchdowns won't beat Burrow in 2022-23, especially with our often injured secondary. Oh, yeah, and you know Burrow just going to get – he just going to get better. Um, they, I feel like they don't have too much to do. It's, for me, um, again, that, that wide receiver that you mentioned – like, uh, but it's it's all about the use of the guys that we got, um, and if like if J.K. and Gus can be who they were before, hopefully they can. I know somebody mentioned in the comment section, they're like, oh, Jake J.K. his knee got torn up in high school or something like that, or his knee got torn up before, and he came back even better. So they said they got no doubts about J.K. at all, and, and hopefully that does end up being right, um, and about him, but really about everybody, um, but. I feel like Ra Ravens got the capability. I feel like they can even do it now um, with with Bateman and with Hollywood. And um, you got Mark Andrews. But I feel like if you could add and I build up the offensive line first and foremost, that, that got to be taken care of. Um, one thing that would make a drastic difference would be situational play calling. It would be situational play calling. If Ravens can improve their then that will make such a big difference seriously so i think that that would change a lot but if they had like another stud wide receiver too like three of them like you trade for a calvin really or something like ooh. <laughs> and say for instance Hurst was like hey y'all let's let bygones be bygones and so on and so on it's like i'm willing to come back and be the backup tight end or if the Ravens, I mean, they still need to get another tight end. They, that's that's a, a need now. You got Nick Boyle, but do you really have Nick Boyle? You you got to get another tight end. That's a necessity. So, mm, this draft going to be something. Uh, but, yeah, those are the things that I think would definitely help them be that five-touchdown team you're talking about. He said, B, uh, we already know that any top-tier free agent – or offensive player that we as fans ever covet or speculate about signing is never actually signed to the Ravens roster. A it, it is a tiny bit. Sometimes, like very rarely, but not too often. Uh, so I won't speculate because it only hurts when that player signs elsewhere. Uh, but could we... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up now. Now this one threw me off, man. He said, could we trade Marquise Brown despite his friendship with Lamar? Would another team even take him for a second round pick? I think they definitely would. I, I think they definitely would quick. Um, but he said, sometimes what initially looks like a loss can turn into a major gain. Trade Miles Boykin, trade James Prochet. Oh, you looking to get rid of everybody. Um, how about Tylen Wallace? Roman Harbaugh and DaCosta obviously don't value these receivers. Well, that part. Uh, anybody can run jet sweeps. Maybe Duvernay could bring a return since Roman can't figure out how to use a talented receiver who should be catching passes and be part of the rushing attack. Could a combination of any of these players be used to increase the number of draft picks to 13 or 14? Cincinnati gets better regardless of what the Ravens do. Um... It could. They could uh, trade one of those players for draft picks. But I just feel like um, I feel like I think I keep saying it, I think they're going to trade Miles Boykin this offseason. I would love if, if he would be used, but you could tell like they're not going to use him. You could tell like actions speak louder than anything. And the way that he was used, it really wasn't it was just special teams. That was it. 
They had him as a gunner, I believe, and they had him on a kickoff, uh, the kickoff, you know, on special teams. And that was it. They are not going to use Miles Boykin in this offense ever again. They're not. Um, I, I initially, I didn't think that he was going to make the roster this offseason. Um, cause especially cause he was dealing with the injury and stuff. And I just, I thought that they were going to be like, all right, well, yeah, that's it. But they, I think, I remember him being on the field. He did miss some time there, but, um, I feel like I've seen him on the field this year for like, maybe like six, seven plays, maybe in total. I'm probably wrong about that, but that's like all that I remember. I do not remember him being out there like hardly ever. Um, so I, I do think he's going. Love Miles Boykin, man. Love him. I just wish he would. And I hope wherever he does end up, that he gets some real opportunity and, and really gets to show his stuff. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking about, oh, switching the tight end, switching the tight end. But whatever he does, wherever he goes, if he does end up going somewhere, I do. I hope he gets a shot. I really do. I hope he does, man. Um, so, I mean, and even with, if they had a bunch of draft picks, how are you going to use them? Like, with, with the draft, I, I would rather them just trade up. I would rather them trade up to get higher draft picks. Because I feel like if they got a higher draft pick, then they will be invested more into really trying to make it work for that player. You get all these low draft picks, and you got like, oh, 14, 15, 16 draft picks. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of picks. Great. But you're not going to really invest in these guys like that. And it is more players. The more chances you, you take it back, the more opportunities you get to hit a home run. But you, how hard are you going to be swinging at, at four fifth round draft picks How hard are you really going to be swinging Versus two first round picks Or uh, one first round pick And three second round picks It's, it's a different mentality man it's, it's a whole different mentality In my opinion And that's why when Ravens be stacking all these draft picks It's like okay for what For what you're not even going to invest yourself And you're not even going to invest into these players like that Especially the low ones So why what's the point Shout out to Graven.